Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Jack Murphy Stadium here in San Diego, where the Chargers will be hosting the Denver Broncos. This game is meaningless as far as the playoffs are concerned, but there are a lot of other games that mean a lot of things today, Murphy. Certainly are, Charlie. Uh, Broncos already in the playoffs. They've clinched home field in the AFC. But around the league, as we go to the scoreboard, you're going to see that there are a lot of battles left to be decided. Some have already been decided, but some still hanging up for grabs and will be until tomorrow night. And interesting as you take a look first at the Raiders and the Giants. Giants win the division, and the Raiders are out at Phoenix and Philadelphia game in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia winning, and of course, if Philadelphia wins, they are a wild card team. Miami now and Kansas City are out of it. That's meaningless. That's it. That New Orleans wins. Indianapolis loses, so the Colts are out. The Colts are gone now. Pittsburgh still very much alive, although they need a loss by Cincinnati. Green Bay is still very much in it. <laughs> and so many things still to be decided today on NBC. For the Denver Broncos, they were strange figures, these ghosts of Christmas past. Super Bowl 21 and the specter of the New York Giants. Super Bowl 22, haunted by painful visions of the Washington Redskins. Then the ghost of Christmas present, spirit, conduct me where you will. Let me profit by the gift of the new Denver defense. And that's not humbug, that's Humphrey. And then the solemn phantom, draped and hooded, can the ghost of Christmas yet to come deliver the Denver Broncos to Super Bowl 24? NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Denver Broncos versus the San Diego Chargers. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. The temperature, well, we're having a heat wave on this Christmas Eve. The temperature today in the mid-80s. Well, it's low right now, but it promises to climb even higher. The temperature in Denver, well, it's not too bad. It's 44 degrees. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones. This is Merlin Olson. We have nine rookies starting for these two teams, and of the nine, who has the most pressure? Charlie, I think that's very simple. It would be Billy Joe Tolliver. Always the most pressure on the field, focused on the quarterback. Billy Joe also matched up against John Elway today, one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL. But he's learning, he's trying to earn a job. Humble young man. They said, Have you really had an impact so far? Billy Joe said very simply, Hey, I'm one and four. I don't think so. <laughs> he always counts the bottom line the numbers of the victories and the defeats. Charlie, I think Dan Reeves is going to treat this game much as he would the final preseason game of the year. So much to lose here today. Injuries, momentum, not a lot to prove. They already have the home field advantage. They're already in the playoffs. So they don't want to do anything that would damage their playoff hopes. Anthony Miller and Jamie Holland are deep as David Treadwell will be kicking off for the Denver Broncos. You can look for Anthony Miller to be returning it. He needs a couple of good ones. 25 yards or more to take over the lead and kickoff returns to the National Football League. That one is 24, so it's right in the neighborhood. Now let's take a look at the San Diego Chargers. And first, of course, we will take a look at their offense. An offensive line that is coming off of an excellent game against Kansas City. Their backs and receivers will feature the running of Marion Butts and they'll complement him with an H back and two tight ends. On passing downs, Butts, the H back and one tight end will come out. Darren Nelson comes into the backfield. Wayne Walker and Quinn Early will come in as the wide receivers. And as expected, Marion Butts opens on the ground. Let's take a look at Denver's defense. A defense that is loud, an NFL low of 207 points. When they face the pass, the nose tackle and two left side linebackers will come out. And they are replaced by three defensive backs. Now, normally that would give you seven in the secondary. However, rookie free safety Steve Atwater moves up to linebacker where he has been very effective. The 
Little play action fake by Billy Joe. Drops it off to Arthur Cox. Cox to the 40. Cox to the 50 and into Denver territory. Charlie, when I see Arthur Cox run, it reminds me of some of the dreams I had as a young man of a tackle carrying the football. And Cox is hurt. You see him limping as he heads for the sideline. But he looks like a tackle or a guard rumbling. Let's see what happens. May have been hit right at the end. Coming from his H-back position, just stares the back off, quick throw into the flat. And now he uses those felt hips to get <laughs> downfield. Looks like he jammed that knee or an ankle, perhaps, as he was tackled. Svelte hips? Svelte hips. <laughs> Swivel hips. He's a tight end. This stands 6'2", 277 pounds. First down at the 48 after the gain of 20. Quick out. Far side is complete to Anthony Miller. I think he might be lying about 270, Charlie. I think he is. When he looked at him yesterday in practice, He's, he's either the 300 mark. Wade Phillips told us yesterday that he worried most about the quick throws into the flat. Tolliver has shown the ability to unload the ball quickly there, has not yet mastered those downfield and deep roots, but so far he's been able to throw short successfully against this defense, and they're off to a good drive. Second down and five. That's the remaining back. Parker is in motion. And here is Butts to the outside. He's got nine yards to the 34, and he picks up the first down. Rushing against the defense, Charlie, that is doing a much better job in 1989. They were near the last of the pack, 27th in the NFL in 1988. Look what they've done in 89, as they have improved their defense tremendously, not just against the run, but overall as well. And San Diego with the opening drive. And and Merlin, I think you could say that San Diego has a bit more at stake in this game. Not a lot, but a little bit more than Denver because San Diego wants to win on high note. It's been a very disappointing season. Play action fake. Right side, and he overthrows the intended receiver, who is Wayne Walker. It'll be second down and 10. Tolliver is a side armor, Charlie. And if he has had a pattern over the four games he started, it's been his overthrowing of receivers. And I think that's typical for a young quarterback who who fired out gets a little too much on it. Let's watch the motion here. See if he does unload this ball sidearm. Yeah. Three quarters of the way across not pure sidearm ball tended to float a little bit him on that pass. Second and ten. Walker's in motion. Tolliver to throw. It's off to Butts and right through his hands. And a little more velocity than Billy Joe Tolliver needed on that one. Very much only has seven receptions on the year. That's an area that they want to work on in the offseason. And from a San Diego standpoint, a lot of the offensive players are going to stay in the area and work out in the offseason. Well, they want to get Billy Tolliver some more work, but Jim McMahon is not out of the picture yet. And, of course, they're still looking to get Mark Vlasic back. Vlasic on physically unable to perform. But McMahon said yesterday, hey, he said, if they'll sign me to a contract, I'll come back and compete for the job. I don't care. I'll take my chances with the uh, training camp next year. Third and ten. Nelson is into the offensive set. Tolliver goes deep, and he overthrows everybody. He was out of time, and he was throwing it away. And it will be fourth down. But with Tolliver and McMahon, assuming that McMahon is signed to a contract, he has no option yeah. on his contract, that's a question that maybe Bobby Bethard is going to have to answer if he, as expected, ends up all, being the general manager. All the sources that we talked to here have strongly indicated that it, uh, Bobby Bethard is, uh, it is an imminent signing. Well, with Steve Ortmeyer uh, being fired this week uh, by Alex Spanos, it certainly would seem like a very sure bet at this point. This is a 52-yard field goal attempt. Too many men on the field. Patton coming off. 52 yards away is going to come short. So a frustrating start for San Diego. Chris Barr in his 14th year just didn't have enough pop on this football. Pretty good hold, but it never got there. 11.48, time remaining. We're in the first quarter, and we have no score between Denver and San Diego. Are you the one to put these away? Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at the angel up on top. This is it. Ready? One, two, three, four! Yeah! gather around for the 
holidays, there's no better beer to have around than Michelob. Look for our tree at your store and have a happy holiday. Another Pontiac First is ready for delivery. The first four-door version of Grand Prix style and performance. The new Grand Prix Sports Sedan. You've got to drive it. Get on the Pontiac and ride. Pontiac ride. The exciting new four-door Grand Prix. You've got to check it out. We build excitement. Now get 4.8% financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's All Out Excitement Closeout. Stuffing! Mr. Scrooge loves the new stuffing and the five-piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Stuffing! With five pieces of the Colonel's chicken and two buttermilk biscuits, all for only $4.99. Perfect for the two of us. Heavens, it's the Cratchits! Hide the stuffing. We brought the ten-piece holiday meal. With four biscuits and more stuffing. Just $9.99. I like the way you think, Cratchit. Get the five- or ten-piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Denver's offense, this year the Broncos feature a revamped and much more physical offensive line, backs and receivers, a pair of rookies, Bobby Humphrey and Mel Bratton starting as running backs on passing downs. Now they will come out, and Steve Sewell comes into the backfield. Michael Young comes in as a wide receiver. Then the tight end, Clarence K, will go out, and another tight end, Orson Mobley, comes in, but he'll come in as the fourth wide receiver. Denver, first opportunity from their own 34-yard line. And Mel Bratton has a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. And let's check the 10-minute ticker. Giants still winning big. Philadelphia there into the playoffs. Kansas City defeats Miami. And that's meaningless as far as the playoffs with everything else that's going on. New Orleans, Indianapolis. Indianapolis is out. Oh, Lost the game that could have put them in the playoffs. New Orleans finishes strong. Pittsburgh, they're still, man, they're still alive for the playoffs. Green Bay defeating Dallas and Green Bay, of course, still alive for the playoffs. The Rams come from behind to defeat New England. Now, that puts another... That complicates that It Green complicates that mix, doesn't it? Here's the reverse to Sewell. And he is taken out of bounds by the toast, Alvis Patterson. Let's look at the defense of San Diego. San Diego's defense has been the strength of the team this year. In passing situations, the nose tackle and two inside linebackers will come out. George Hinkle joins the defense in front, and Elliott Smith and Roy Bennett join a secondary that is upset this week because cornerback Gil Bird was not selected for the Pro Bowl. But they felt, Merlin, he really deserved it. Well, and I know the folks up in Denver uh, looking at the uh, paltry pickings, so to speak, yeah. uh, for the Pro Bowl, very upset. And it's been a couple of years since they have been properly recognized with Pro Bowl selections. The ball at the 38. Here is Elway. He fires. The pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Gil Bird had the coverage. Vance Johnson, the intended receiver. And by the way, for Denver, Ricky Natillo bothered by that kneecap again. And so he is sitting out this game. And we certainly hope that he is ready in a couple of weeks for the playoffs. Here is a note handed to me. The Rams clinch the wild card with a win today. So the Rams are in. Well, and Green Bay must wait now. Their chance would be if Minnesota loses tomorrow night, they'd win the division and they would be in. So that one's still hanging, but their chance at the wild card apparently would be gone. In fact, is gone, Charlie. Mike Horan kicking. Very high, but not too deep. McConkey with a fair catch at the 34-yard line. So we've got a timeout. 10.50, time remaining in the first period, and we have no score. quick and with purpose that's the whole idea behind Pontiac's newest Grand Prix introducing the first Grand Prix ever with four doors the new Grand Prix sports sedan now get 4.8 percent financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's all-out excitement closeout it wasn't too long ago when an American car here in Switzerland would make people look up in surprise. Not anymore. Oh, I wouldn't say they're all over the place, but GM sells a lot of cars over here these days. Good cars at good value. I should know, this is my dealership right here. 
GM exports more cars around the world from North America than any other car manufacturer. It's 32 degrees, and Jan Trumpeter is learning all about her antifreeze the hard way. Why is this happening to me? Don't push your luck. Guarantee it with advanced formula Prestone. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by New Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? By GMAC the financial services people from General Motors. And by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. Welcome back to a very warm and very pleasant Christmas Eve here in San Diego. We have no score between the Chargers and the Broncos. Those qualified the playoff picture. We'll come right back to that and we will. It's uh, beginning to sort itself out, but there's still some sorting to go on. Not as much as there was yesterday. Albert. That's right. And Butts is bet he's going to lose a couple of yards. Denver Bronco defense doing what you have to do with a big back, Charlie. You turn him to the sideline. You get those shoulders turned to the sideline. He can't use that power on you. Butts, who is about 250 pounds, has a 40-yard run and a 50-yard run. First game of the season against the... Raiders in Los Angeles, so he can rumble for a big man. Second down and 12. Coming up on you, Anthony. Okay. Tom to throw. Over the middle through the hands of Butts. Incomplete. So Butts is 0 for 2 as a receiver. Mark Munford had the coverage on him, but something that Tolliver has been struggling with, that is on a short pass, is taking it off and throwing with a touch. He has still got too much velocity, typical of a young, strong-armed quarterback. And he'll have that problem. Elway himself, Charlie, in his rookie year, had real trouble overthrowing the football, just putting too much steam on it, put it right through the hands of his intended receivers. Darren Nelson checks into the offensive set, third down and 12. Six in the secondary for the Broncos. And Walker goes in motion. Tolliver over the middle, and it is broken up. Walker, the intended receiver. No, it's Nelson, the intended receiver, and Dennis Smith was there. Dennis Smith, one of those Broncos identified for the Pro Bowl and pleased about it, had his best year since 1984. Big plays all season long. And he's taking a few well-deserved bows uh, along with Greg Cragen and uh, the the punter or not the punter but the kicker David Treadwell who was ecstatic at being able to go to the Pro Bowl. Oh he is thrilled. Hank Elisic to kick and Ken Bell is the return man. Bell will will be turning all of the punts and back on the kickoffs today as Dan Reeves wants him to regain some of that confidence. Here comes pressure. He's bobbled a few this season. This one he stays away from and it'll go out of bounds. 9.55 left to go. We're in the first quarter, a 46-yard kick, and we have no score. Wouldn't it be great if suddenly you were in charge of the annual swimsuit issue, deciding things like how the models pose and who gets the cover? And wouldn't it be great if the models brought beer? Really great beer, like Keystone, the fresh cold filtered beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially lined can. And wouldn't it be great if later that day you all went bowling? Introducing Keystone and Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? It's big, it's now, it's Pontiac's all-out excitement closeout. Now with our longest-term 4.8% finance rate ever on Grand Prix. That's right. Now every new Grand Prix is available with long-term 4.8% financing. Or get your share of millions in cash back on Grand Prix and almost every other new 1990 Pontiac in stock. But hurry, your Pontiac dealer is closing out the year with big cash back or 4.8% financing on Grand Prix. It won't last long. See your Pontiac excitement dealer now. choose 
to finance or lease your new GM vehicle someplace other than GMAC, you might find yourself waiting in line instead of out hugging one. GMAC. Nobody wants to get you into your new GM car or truck faster. New Year's Day. Come home to the best in college football. Kick off your day with the Hall of Fame Bowl. The Southeast Conference co-champion Auburn Tigers, the Giant Killers, battle the high-scoring Buckeyes of Ohio State. New Year's Day. The best bowls are on NBC Sports. Championship Monday on NBC, January the 1st. Now look at these teams. Auburn, Ohio State, Nebraska, Florida State, Colorado, Notre Dame. If, if there was a college playoff system, conceivably any two of those teams could be in the finals. Those teams are all that good and they'll all be on NBC on January the 1st. Denver from the 20, Bobby Humphrey. Humphrey to the 27. Number 26, Bobby Humphrey. And speaking of the bowl games, uh, our fabulous foursome will be at the Orange Bowl. Upper right-hand corner. Bobby Beathard. Well, there's that color blue in the San Diego uniform, but he may have an SD instead of an NBC on his pocket very soon. We'll also have uh, reports for you from, uh, from the Rose Bowl and from the Sugar Bowl. So uh, stay with us on January the 1st. Second and four. Elway fires, and a flag is down. Clarence Kay on the receiving end. Billy Ray Smith was there. And this, this is the referee. His name is Tom White. Normally, he is the head linesman, but Bob McElwee is sick. Tom White has replaced him. And Jim Poole, who lives in San Diego, is now the head linesman for this game. And this is his first, his first appearance as a referee. So... He has a little pressure on him. He's a little nervous. Still has the HL on the back. He's got his life. But he <laughs> has put on well, the white hat. That's right. But anyway, well, the shirt fits. That's an interesting responsibility. <laughs> it is. That'll be fun for him, though. His first announcement. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Holding. 44. Defense. Five yards. First down. Well done. Very well, I wonder well if he had stage fright down there, Charlie. Of course he did. Of course he did. He should. <laughs> do we get a recording of that and we'll send it to him? We ought to do that. And send him his recording of your first announcement. This crowd booed him. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't because he didn't do a good job. They no, just they, didn't like the call. They didn't like the call. It's a first down at the 32. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. LA is dropped at the 25. Leslie O'Neill, he's going to the Pro Bowl. He now has 11 and a half sacks. Last week, the San Diego defense <coughs> was just vicious as they attacked the quarterback. And they get after Elway. Elway wanted Vance Johnson. And had he had just a second longer, Gil Bird, who was locked up and will be all day on Johnson, had fallen down. But Elway ran out of time as Leslie O'Neill closed the noose on him. Pro Bowl selections, Mecklenburg, Smith, Cragen, Treadwell. I missed Mecklenburg a moment ago. Not a good thing to do. Williams, O'Neill, and Miller. Second and 17. Pass is complete far side to Orson Mobley. Mobley a tight end in the four wide receivers. Comes in as a wide out. Bayless with the tackle. Charlie, I mentioned the pressure on Elway last week. DeBerg in Kansas City knocked down 28 times by this defense of San Diego the victors today in white the Rams winning Philadelphia winning they will be the two wild card teams Rams at Philadelphia in the NFC the Giants ran in San Francisco is in the two remaining teams Minnesota and Green Bay Minnesota wins tomorrow night they're in if they lose Green Bay is in much simpler now third down and eight Elway has a man open at Sewell, and he can't hang on to it, and he had the first down by a yard. It'll be fourth down. Elliott Smith had the coverage. Chance to watch Elway in action. This pass should have been caught, Charlie, right there, right in the hands of Sewell, who had it and then lost it. Fourth down and eight, Haran to punt. 
McConkey is the return man. Had a rumor earlier in the week, Farquette said he was going to uh, run for the Senate in the state of New York. He said, uh, I think that's a, that's a bit uh, premature. No score back in a moment. Enemy on the open. Moving up on your right, Bravo. Two. Fire! I'm 30 miles from the action, but I'm responsible for a digital communication link between headquarters and brigade. Enemy if the data isn't programmed right, 5,000 troops could be cut off. The enemy forces together. But I'd never let that happen to my brigade. Op 4 is eliminated. Be all that you can be. You did it, sir. Outstanding. Get it your life in the Army. If you feel life's more interesting when you make a splash, it's the right here now. If you feel a great beer, starts with great water. It's the right beer now. Because you're the kind of person who likes to get to the bottom of things, call for the silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. Coors Light, it's the right beer now. NBC Sports serves your need to know all week long. Dial 1-900-454-3500 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anywhere in the USA. Yesterday, we visited with the Chargers and the Broncos, and we now share with you Saturday snapshots. For the second straight week, the Chargers took Wednesday off, but they made up for it in yesterday's practice. Merlin's brother, Phil, former Denver Bronco, who now broadcasts for Utah State, is here with us this weekend. That's offensive guard Broderick Thompson's red cap. I promised to get it on television. Oh, by the way, that's quarterback Billy Joe Tolliver with me. Watch out for your teammates. The Chargers put defensive back Lester Lyle's car on blocks, took the tires, and left it overlooking the practice field. Denver came to town, and rookies Bobby Humphrey and Mel Bratton dropped by for a visit. Bobby Humphrey has the golden touch, but he told us he did leave room for a Super Bowl ring. Coordinator Wade Phillips said his entire defense has contributed to its success, and head coach Dan Reeves wished everyone a Merry Christmas. Saturday snapshots. Had a chance to visit with both teams. That's always fun. That's one of the better parts of, uh, of our job, or visiting with the players and the coaches. No score here, San Diego. With the first down at their own 30-yard line, Butts is the remaining back. And Tolliver will come out throwing. This is a screen, and it is dropped. And that is the third opportunity that Butts has had as a receiver, and he's yet to hold on to the football. Marion Butts coming off his all-time performance, carried the ball 39 times for 176 yards last week. And how big is that for him? How big is that? Well, I'll tell you, you watch him. He's going to drop this pass. Charlie, in his senior year at Florida State, he carried the ball 29 times for 133 yards all year. So... Florida State not utilizing the talents of this young man when he was there. An idea of the depth they had. He was a blocker for Sammy Smith last year when he was there. Tolliver is two for eight as a thrower, but he is has six consecutive incompletions. So they go back to the ground, to the ground. Marion Butts carries, and Carricker makes the tackle. The youngest center in the league, just 21 years old. Courtney Hall, a starter all year long, working on Greg Cragen, nose, toe, nose tackle, who is going to the Pro Bowl. They get a good block inside. David Richards working on him, but Carricker and Dennison, number 55, and Brooks, number 56, showing you why this Denver defense is so tough against the run. And San Diego faces a third down at 11. Nelson comes in, Walker comes in, he's the motion man. Blitz coming from the left side. Dolliver steps forward. Juggle and the drop. Anthony Miller with the sure hands, and he had the first down. A strange play as Tolliver showed some good maturity, felt the pressure, simply took a couple of steps forward and sidearmed a real rifle shot in there. It certainly looked as if Anthony Miller had plenty of time to control that football. Just watch the end of the play. Tolliver looking to his left comes back inside and finds the man open. Can't can't see anything, any reason to drop that yeah. football, Charlie. Chargers have dropped Idas today in the first quarter. Hank Kalisic will kick, and Ken Bell is the return man. Denver has a return on, not that good a kick. And Bell runs past it. And it goes to the 21-yard line. 
Charlie Kenny Bell a strange story on the year had had pretty good hands but early in the year got into trouble fumbling on the punts in fact fumbled twice against Philadelphia did not make a call didn't warn one of the other backs the ball hit him they lost another football he came back they they cut him they brought him back and they've given him a chance to return but today he just doesn't want any part of that football and there's a late flag dropped at the 37 yard line he just is staying away and Dan Reeves told us he wanted him there to, to regain his confidence wants it to help him get his confidence back and because they feel they might need him for the playoffs. that was a perfect ball to return because it was low and the coverage wasn't there yet twice he's run out from underneath it today unsportsmanlike conduct on the part of the receivers he blocked after having signals penalty is 15 yards but the dead ball spot is farther back we'll leave it there first down and that is a call against Ken Bell because once you go up with the fair catch once you give that you cannot block a man coming down now before they change it they, they'd set up some men and really nail him. there you see Kenny Bell number 35 having given a fair catch signal lot allowed he thought that ball might get into the end zone just a bad bad choice there is the block right there and of course they'll lose yardage as a result of it the block though is at the 37 15 yards would take it back to the 22 the ball rolled to the 21 so they leave it there and Bobby Humphrey carries that was the the long explanation of the long explanation of the referee Merton let's check out the scores as we mentioned most of the spots now decided Raiders out Giants in Philadelphia in Kansas City and Miami are out Indianapolis out as is New Orleans Pittsburgh well they're still still hoping they're still hoping they're a possibility the Rams are in Good old Rams. Good old Rams. Back door, but they're in. It, anyway, it doesn't make any difference. Bobby Humphrey. Couple of yards to the 27. It'll be third down and four. Figaro makes the tackle along with Burt Grossman. So in the AFC, Buffalo will be at Cleveland. And the wild card will play at Denver. And the wild card, Houston is in as a wild card. They will play either. Pittsburgh or Cincinnati depending on whether Cincinnati wins or loses tomorrow night the Giants are in San Francisco in the Rams at Philadelphia in the wild card game and the other champion will be either Minnesota or Green Bay Elway they're going to ruin the grass <coughs> One of the things that we do not expect to see today is a lot of John Elway. Dan Reeves told us early he may only give Elway one quarter. Lee Williams, number 99. Boy, that's a fine inside move on the rookie, Doug, Doug Whitell. And he's got a good grasp on him. That's a good call. But Elway, who is so strong physically, pulls away. But they'll give Lee Williams the sack. Mike Curran will be kicking. Has pressure. He gets a good one off. McConkey, fair catch at the last moment at the 34 yard line. Oh, he, 45 yards on the kick, and guess who was down staring him in the eyes? It was Ken Bell. NBC Sports kicks off its College Bowl lineup next Saturday afternoon with the Freedom Bowl. The Washington Huskies take on the Florida Gators. The Freedom Bowl next Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. The best bowls are here on NBC. No score between San Diego and Denver. And we have just over five minutes to go in the first quarter. And Merlin, I have an impression that both, both teams are slow to get started. Well, it's more understandable on the part of the Denver Broncos. I, I'm surprised we haven't seen a more emo emotional San Diego team. Tolliver goes deep. This may be the emotion. McEwen, the H-back, has the reception, 29 yards at water, saves the touchdown. McEwen, who had played for Dan Henning at Washington, they brought him in to give him a chance, and with Cox out of the ball game, they're kind of swimming some new people into this lineup. He's a pass-down specialist at 220 pounds, not a great blocker, but he is very quick downfield and runs excellent patterns. Was at the right end of that pass by Billy Joe Tolliver. Butts is the running back. A looping timing pattern that Miller went inside and could not get outside in time. Tyrone Braxton was there for the defense. It'll be second down. Talking to 
Dan Reeves yesterday and he was uh, I think amazed as everyone was that this defense could make such huge improvements under a new coordinator Wade Phillips in a single year. Now, this defense uh, had really been the Achilles heel for the last few years of this Denver Bronco team and now the strength of this Denver Bronco team a real turnaround. Second and ten. Play action. It's intercepted at the 22 yard line. Wyman Henderson with the interception 22 yards on the return and Quinn early makes a tackle for San Diego and he played it. Oh just like the playbook says but question but Charlie watch the pressure right here on Tolliver. Simon Fletcher 73 right there forces the bad pass that ball is hung up for grabs there. It's a pressure sack situation. The ball being thrown too early and Tolliver can't get it off with any strength on it right here. He's leaning back feeling the heat right there from one of the league's leading sackers. We've got two of them here today. And not only Fletcher but Lee Williams who got a sack just a moment ago. And Denver with a turnover at their own 43 yard line and they've been putting points on the board this year after turnovers. Bye. Bye -bye. San Diego has it back. Now that's something you really hate to do when your defense gets the football for you. Billy you don't Ray want to give it right back. Billy Ray Smith jars it loose and Plummer recovers it. I think he just lost it. No, he did. You're right. Lee You're Williams right. was leaning in. It's Billy Ray on the yeah. bottom. No, it's Plummer. Plummer. Gary Plummer, number 50. Lee Williams was reaching in. There's the turnover ratio, a plus seven for the Broncos and a healthy plus six for the Chargers. But here's something you've got to look at. What do they do with those turnovers when they get a chance to get them? The Broncos have picked up 123 points, have only given up 71, a plus 52. Look at the Chargers. A minus 17. They have not been able to take advantage of their opportunities on the turnover nor stop their opponents when they've given the ball away. They have an opportunity here and Marion Butts picks up two to the Denver 45. We have no score. We're moving on the four minute mark time remaining in the first quarter and with an exchange of turnovers as Craig and Fletcher make the tackle. Maybe both teams will start getting more involved a little more physical. Does it take a little while this time of the year to get to get the juices going. Charlie I think it's simply that there's not that much at stake in this game. We haven't seen the emotional level out of either of these teams that we would expect of NFL teams who are at the end of their season. Parker's the motion man and here is Buss to the 43. It'll be third down and six. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game. At the conclusion of the game Michael Brooks making that last tackle for Denver. Several of the additions that have really helped this Denver defense. Alfonso Carriker, a plan B free agent out of Green Bay, and Ron Holmes, a trade out of Tampa Bay. Two of the very big people up front who have helped this offensive or defensive line. And the other thing I really think has helped him, Charlie, Michael Brooks playing so well, and Mecklenburg returning to form, and Simon Fletcher. That's made that front seven so much tougher. Tolliver has pressure, throws it in. Rookie mistake, it's intercepted. Boy, he went into triple coverage. Brad Hankey, number 68, getting some heat on him. They call him Sergeant Carter after the character yeah. on Gomer Pyle. They made him an honorary uh, Marine last week. He's number 68. He'll come from the top of your screen right there. He was the man pressuring on that last play. And twice in a row, we've seen Tolliver Cough it up to interceptions under the heat from the Denver defense. And the rookie, Darren Carrington, is the man who has his first interception on the season. And Denver has the ball at their own 37 yard line. And Bobby Humphrey is hit at the line of scrimmage by Gary Plummer. He may get a yard. It'll be second down. I asked John Elway if he would mind stepping aside today and allowing his counterpart Gary Kubiak who has come in to sub for him a couple of times and well once this year when he was down with the flu against Washington, the Washington Redskins. Yes. He said no he said but the one thing I was sympathizing with with Gary he said I didn't have a chance to warm up and practice. We gave him more snaps this week. <laughs> Second and nine. 
Whoa. Elway, a miscommunication with Vance Johnson. Johnson Elway. read to break, break to the inside. Elway read that he would break to the outside. Well, Charlie, it's kind of hard to make a decision when you got Joe Phillips bearing down on you. But let's watch and see what Vance Johnson does. I mentioned the matchup. Gil Bird will be on him all day. And Bird, number 22, having as good a year this year as any defensive back in the league. Very tight coverage there from... Gary Plummer as well, number 50, from his linebacking position. Elway threw that one away. Third down and nine. Shotgun. Elway's pass is incomplete. Johnson, the intended receiver, right at the first down marker, but it's no good. Gil Bird had the coverage. And it'll be fourth down, and Denver will be kicking again. So we've seen about seven catchable balls dropped by these two teams here in the early going. And the punters getting a workout here in the first quarter. Neither team able to generate any kind of an offense. Mike Horan, the punter, Phil McConkey, the return man. Looking for a block. It's not going to be there. And he will be brought down to the 28-yard line. 35 yards on the kick. A yard return. Simon Fletcher makes the tackle. Let's go to the to the 10-minute ticker. And once again, as you look at the to see how your favorite team did in the AFC, Buffalo, Cleveland, and Denver in the playoffs. Houston is in the playoffs as a wild card. They'll be playing either Pittsburgh or Cincinnati. That will be decided tomorrow night. The Cincinnati-Minnesota game in the NFC. The Giants are in San Francisco. Also in Rams and Philadelphia. That's the wild card game. The other team is either Minnesota if they win. If they lose, it'll be Green Bay in that Cincinnati-Minnesota game tomorrow night. San Diego at their own 28-yard line first down. Tolliver throws deep. And he's all over the park today. Miller, the closest receiver. Wyman Henderson had the coverage. I'm wondering why San Diego doesn't go back to the running attack that was so effective against Kansas City because Tolliver is having a terrible afternoon. Well, they're not able to run it comfortably, and I mentioned earlier that Tolliver had overthrown a number of his passes during his first four starts. Watch how far over the head of an open Anthony Miller this pass is. If you're going to complete that pass, you throw it down around his feet and let him dive for it. We have just under two minutes to go in the first period. Tolliver has thrown 14 passes, only three completions, and he has two interceptions. And some of those weren't close either. He has had a number Th drop. He's had some drops. Charlie. He's had four drops. Here's the screen, and it is incomplete. Darren Nelson, the intended receiver. Randy Robbins at the coverage, but the Broncos defense has saturated the screen. Defending for the Broncos, Randy Robbins. And there is Jim McMahon. He's going to stay in town the rest of the week for the Holiday Bowl because uh, his alma mater, BYU, will be playing against Penn State. All says, I want to get in a little golf before I head back to Chicago where it's too cold to play this time of the year. Get much golf in there. I don't know that we will see McMahon today. That's a question. Tolliver's the man they want to look at. Not much percentage in putting McMahon back into this ball game, but if, I guess if Tolliver gets bad enough, you might see Henning do that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tolliver's pass is complete. A flag is down. If it stands up, it's Anthony Miller. Braxton with the tackle. He has the first down. Charlie, I don't know if we can see it, but Carl Mecklenburg just leveled Michael Brooks, his own teammate. He went up to get a hit on the receiver, and Brooks was bumping him, and he just knocked him right on his back, left side of the play. Wow. And the penalty is going to go against the Chargers. They'll bring it back. Again, the referee is Tom White, scheduled to be the head linesman for this game. But due to the sickness of Bob McElwee, he's the head Pass man. Pass interference, number 83, offense, 10 yards, third down. Anthony Miller gets the call that used to be, a few years ago, also a loss of down. They said that was just too much. 10 yards is enough. And so they'll get the down over. It'll be third and 20. Pro Bowl receiver, outstanding year, and third down conversions. <laughs> Look at those donuts. The Broncos right up near the top of the league in that category. Just a fraction behind Miami coming into this game for the AFC lead. 
Third and 20. Tolliver has time, goes downfield. He's got the first down. Quinn Early with the reception. They'll mark it at the 39, close to the 40. He, he got 22. He needed 20. Now, the crowd, it's a good crowd for a Christmas Eve and a team that's completely out of it with a 5-10 record. They're into the ballgame. Quinn Early, who missed a lot of ball games, Charlie, as you mentioned, with knee problem. Glad to be back in the action. Of course, they're matching him up against the receivers who are, are against the defensive backs who have done so well during this year for the Denver Broncos. Braxton has had a fine year. Nelson is in motion, a first down at the 40. But San Diego has decided to live or die by the pass. This is complete to the rookie Wayne Walker at the 37-yard line of Denver. 24 yards, so back-to-back -back 22 and 24-yard completions for the rookie quarterback. Back-to-back -back confidence builders for Tolliver, who has thrown some real stinkers in this first half comes back with a couple of nice passes and has a drive underway the end of the first quarter is history and we have no score heineken amstel lights this so is much it. better than it's other a great beers. imported beer a I mean, delicious European nothing compares taste. to the smoothness, a refreshing the richness or the character distinctive of flavor that cuts through its your quality thirst. comes through there's a uniqueness to it heineken is america's number one selling imported beer Amstel Light is America's number one selling imported light beer. Why? Just ask the people who drink them. If you ask me, Amstel Light is the best beer there is. I could go on and say enough about it. It's a light beer. No matter how many beers you drink. The freedom to say and think what we believe is ensured by this document. Join us in supporting the National Archives celebration of the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. Listen to what they're saying about the Hyundai Sonata. The Hyundai Sonata is one of the most powerful cars in its class, road and track. Interior room and trunk space are outstanding. Motor trend. The Sonata has a lot to recommend it. Car and driver. Power, room, value. No wonder the competition's green with envy. The Hyundai Sonata. We're making more sense than ever. Right now, factory-to-dealer incentives can save you hundreds on a new 1990 Sonata. New Year's Day, come home to the best in college football and a rematch of the thrilling 1988 Sunkissed Fiesta Bowl. The fifth-ranked Florida State Seminoles battle the Cornhuskers of number six, Nebraska. The Sunkissed Fiesta Bowl. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC Sports. Interesting numbers, the statistics, reflecting exactly what we saw in the first 15 minutes of play. Rather pathetic. Rather pathetic and uh, not great defense, just unemotional offense. Report on Dennis Smith, he is out with a groin sprain. Nelson has four yards to the 33. It'll be second down and six. Munford with the tackle. We talked earlier about the young center Courtney Hall of San Diego. For 53, working on 71. We mentioned Cragen going to the Pro Bowl. Courtney Hall, good hands and good strength. There should be a penalty on that one as Cragen goes to the face mask. That's the kind of infighting that the offensive and defensive linemen go through on every play. Courtney Hall has had a fine year, really maturing as the leader of this offensive line. Even though he's the youngest member of this team, youngest rookie in the NFL. Play action fake. Pass is complete. Anthony Miller pulls it in. Braxton. Oh, it's Quinn Early. It's number 87, Quinn Early, the receiver. This game is important because we want to go into the playoffs with momentum and positive thoughts. Well, after the first quarter, I don't think that Denver has either <laughs> one. <clears throat> well, certainly not the kind of quarter you want to uh, put into your highlight film, Charlie. And Reeves, not a happy man on the sideline. I mentioned he has other priorities more important than winning this game, but he definitely doesn't want his team to get sloppy here today. 
First down at the 26. Walker's in motion. Nelson carries. He comes inside maybe a yard. That's going to be all. It'll be second down and nine. Mecklenburg with the tackle along with Simon Fletcher. Reeves showing some emotion on the sideline. Not the kind of coach who gives a lot of pep talks, Charlie. In fact, uh, has told us over the years that if he has to motivate his players with a pep talk, they better go somewhere else. He expects his players to motivate themselves, but he is animated on the sideline, and he will let people know how he feels on the sideline. I have a feeling he's going to do some motivation at the halftime. We've got a whistle. They may want to reset the clock. We're checking the 32nd clock. Youngest head coaches, Art Shell at 43. Sam White's at 44. Dan Reeves at 45. Well, look look at, at the years experience. Nine years as a head coach. 26 years old. He was already a player coach for the Dallas Cowboys. At 36 years old, he took the head job at Denver and has really put together an amazing record. Only one losing season among those nine. And for many years, rumored to replace Tom Landry, I think he's realized he has a much better situation here than you can find anywhere in the National Football League. Second and nine. That knocked away. Ron Holmes. Holmes, who came from Tampa Bay, thrilled to be looking at the playoffs. Hadn't seen one in a long time. Watch number 90 has really become a dominant force. He's got nine sacks in the last nine games. Look how quickly he is inside. Nelson gets a push on him, but Holmes goes up. That looks like volleyball there. <laughs> Swat. One of those stops right at the line. Third down and nine. Camera work is excellent today. We've got a great crew with us. We're ready on Christmas Eve. We'll celebrate tomorrow. Third and nine. Tolliver far side. He's got Walker. And he is out just shy of the first down marker. Or was that Darren Nelson? It was Darren Nelson. And Randy Robbins makes the tackle. That's the second time that I've misplaced it. Well, those numbers of zeros look alike. Watch this play. Tolliver showing you some of the arm strength we mentioned earlier. This is the kind of play that Elway makes with regularity. The defensive back, Randy Robbins, figured he was close enough to close the door on Darren Nelson. But Tolliver, with great arm strength, got the ball there before Robbins could even move. Fourth down and one. This is the kind of ball game you go for. Chargers motivation to end the season with a victory. And it's Butts. He's got it. He had the first down on second effort, gave him an extra yard and a half. This crowd responds. With Arthur Cox out of the game, they've had to go to using Tim Spencer at the H-back position. Spencer not nearly as big as Cox, who's a, an extra tackle or guard in there, and not as experienced in the blocking patterns. That will hurt San Diego's run game today, Charlie. Spencer goes off to the left flank. And it's the first down at the 15. Butts the remaining back. Spencer's now in motion. He becomes the lead blocker. And a couple of yards for Butts to the 13. Second down and eight. Mark Munford with the tackle. What does that do? Because Spencer really doesn't that work that much as an H-back. Well, he's had to practice the position. He knows the responsibilities, but you're spotting quite a bit of weight on that situation. 233 for Spencer, not a small back, but Cox is up around 280. Well, that's about 50 pounds difference. One of the game going on along with ours in the National Football League this afternoon, and the 49ers have the early lead there. Here we have no score. 10.57 and counting, time remaining in the first half. Reverse. Anthony Miller. He is out just shy, about a foot away from the goal line. 12 yards. One of the ways to attack a good defense, Charlie, is to attack their strength. This Denver defense very quick at reacting. They get them to key to the sweep 
and then hit them with the reverse right there. Good blocking on the outside. Simon Fletcher nailed inside. The rookie Atwater gets over there along with Mumford, and I think it was no Mumford finally that knocked him out. You see the defenders going to their left, and there's the opening to the outside. Spencer, number 543, with the final block right there on Atwater to get him close to the goal line. Now they are reviewing the end of the play. And we do not have an angle that's going to be decisive here. Watch Mumford. He'll be the man who knocks Miller out. Coming in right there. And it's, of course, no, as you know. Braxton. That's Braxton. Not, that's 34. I thought it was 51. To nine seconds. Thank you. They're looking at, it's, as everybody knows by now, it's the position of the ball if it breaks the plane of the goal, but we really don't have you know, an angle that's going to show that. Yeah, we gave them as much as we had. Tom Charlie. Kelleher, the replay official, yes. Mumford was there along with Braxton, but they have that ball bumped up against the goal line, and Denver's defense with their feet that's in their, their own end zone. Out. And San Diego takes a timeout. That stops the clock. 10.43 left to go. We're in the second quarter. We have no score between Denver and San Diego. A gorgeous Christmas Eve. We have a, a heat wave. The, the, the weather yesterday was a, an all-time record high, and I think today will be a record high. I think it's going to reach to the mid-80s. Charlie, knowing that this broadcast is going out to some parts of the country where the weather has not only been freezing, places like Denver, for example, last Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning, 18 degrees below zero. Don't pack your cars and come out, folks. It's not always this pretty here, and sometimes we have earthquakes out here, too. No, that we better pass that along, Charlie. That's in Northern California. <laughs> here, it is always like this. <laughs> yeah, we certainly, I, we almost feel guilty seeing the temperatures at the other game sites today and being here enjoying the beauty of this San Diego day. And now they're resetting the 32nd clock. And we're going to have a little bit of a miscommunication today. One of the reasons we have the rookie referee, Tom White, when uh, when he came to the ballpark, he thought he was going to be the head linesman. But due to uh, Bob McElwee, uh, the, the referee is sick, and so the, the change there, Jim Poole, has replaced him at the head linesman position. Now yeah, well, a lot of people replacing other people on the field today, including the referee. And Good Butts is defense. going to be stopped. Michael Brooks, number 56, one of the tacklers there. 58 along with him. That's Scotty Curtis at the bottom. Watch this great defensive play. They get Butts turned sideways. Good surge inside. You'll see 56 Brooks right there. He has a hold of him from the backside, and Curtis had his legs. He was going nowhere. Mecklenburg also there, losing about a yard and a half on that play. They're further away than they started moments ago. This drive starting at the San Diego 28. And here is Bus diving, and he is turned away again. It'll be third down and goal to go. 61 Townsend, I think the first man to hit him there, Charlie. But again, lots of white-shirted Denver Broncos. This is, I think, the area in which this Denver defense has improved most. The physical nature of their defensive play. And look at that. Klosterman, 97 there, along with Townsend, number 61. And Brooks again. And Brooks again. Brooks having a great year this year. Very important in the performance of this defense. Not so much the scheme. They just line up and come after you. Third down, goal to go. They'll stop him again. Dan Reeves wants some very positive things to look at in this game. He's got one here in that goal line stand. Big play. Spencer trying to lead the blocking again for the 250-pound Marion Butts, but look at that swarm of white-shirted defenders. It was first and goal at the one, second and goal at the two, third and goal at the one, fourth and goal at the four. They're going the wrong way, Charlie. <laughs> 22-yard field goal attempt. Second of the day. He missed an early one. And it is good. 
go. The cannon makes it official, and the Chargers lead it three to nothing. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll love your new Oldsmobile. We'll let you return it within 30 days or 1,500 miles if you don't. Who else does that? Unlike some warranties, Oldsmobile's covers just one part. This is the part. Oldsmobile now offers roadside assistance around the clock, even in places where there aren't any clocks. The Oldsmobile Edge, there's nothing else like it. Hey, hustlers, I got some more party time tips for you from Extra Gold Draft. First, never party with anything less than the full tilt taste of Extra Gold. Hey, this is one tough beer. Another tip, never shoot pool with a guy that brings his own stick. And never ever shoot with a guy that brings his own table. Ask for an extra. Go for the full tilt taste. Nice shot. Thanks. Happy holidays from all of us at Angelsoft and Georgia Pacific. Interstate battery power starts up strong and keeps on going. To find an interstate battery dealer near you, the city government is being run by thugs who leave murder in their path. Don't worry, I'll handle that. You're being pursued by an alien nation, and the only way to go is down. Don't worry, I'll handle that. You've got to save America's future, and we're giving you two gorgeous girls to do it with. Don't worry, I'll... Uh... Chameleons is coming Friday. This is Charlie Jones and Merlin Olsen in the sunshine in San Diego, Jack Murphy Stadium. And the Chargers work on this, and they use this kickoff formation. Now, they'll use it for an onside kick. They show it a lot early, so they can go either way on it. They kind of want the return team to think about things. Look out. Ken He's Bell. And he returns to the 27-yard line. Let's go back to that defensive stand. Charlie, good goal line defense is penetration. Watch the way this Denver defense will knock the offensive line back. And then watch the linebackers penetrating to make the play as they sort their way through. First, the surge by the blue helmets, and you see them knocking San Diego's offensive line back. Now watch the linebackers quickly penetrating. 56, Brooks the first to get there, along with 58, Scotty Curtis again. And Brooks continues to play a brilliant game in the goal line situations anyway. And Although I'd hesitate to say brilliant about anybody here today. Elway, the little shuttle pass back underneath to Bobby Humphrey. Dan Reeves told us he was going to make a decision on the John Elway at the end of the first quarter. He obviously made the decision. He wants to play some of the seconds. Well, I think he's so unhappy with the performance of this offense in the first quarter that he's going to keep Elway on the field. And hoping that this offense will ignite, get things going a little bit. He said he didn't have it hard and fast that Elway would only play a quarter but he wanted to get him out of the game as soon as possible. Second down and six. Mel Bratton and Bobby Humphrey are the running backs. <laughs> Elway has all the time in the world. The pass complete to Vance Johnson. They'll mark it to the 40-yard line. Vance Johnson, one of those that deserved at least an opportunity at that Pro Bowl. He's had 71 passes coming into this game on the season. Catches a beautiful shot here. I mentioned again, working one-on-one -on, -one on Gil Bird, the best of the defenders for this San Diego secondary. And he had beaten Bird cleanly on that little comeback pattern. First down at the 40. Humphrey jumps to the outside. And goes to the 48-yard line. It'll be second down and two. Vincey Glenn with the tackle. Great running backs just have a way of knowing where the opportunities are and then taking advantage very quickly. Humphrey has good eyes and good acceleration. Just jumps out into the open there and picks up about eight yards before they bring him down. Throw. It is low to the right.
right side to Humphrey. It's incomplete. It'll be third down and two. You know, something else that Denver is going to do today, and that is they're going to show a few wrinkles, a few things, because the next team that plays them in two weeks, this is the, the game they're going to come back and look at. So they're going to give them a couple things just to let them think about it. Coaches love to do that. Say, well, they got to spend 30 minutes on this and 30 minutes on that. This will bug them a little, so we'll put it in and make sure that we run it. This be a Four little late. embarrassing to have people looking at numbers like that for Elway and this Bronco offense here in the first part of this ball game. Play action, and the pass is complete. Clarence K has the first down. 14 yards. Elway is not the sprinter he was as a rookie, but he is still a very mobile quarterback. Little naked roll there, and even though he's got pressure from the outside, he just flips that ball downfield. And Clarence K does a good job of getting extra yardage. He already had the first down when he caught the ball. And Les Miller makes the tackle at the 38-yard line. San Diego leading it here by a score of three to nothing. And right now for a news update, let's go to NBC News in New York City. We interrupt this program for an NBC News special report. Here is Mary Alice Williams. NBC News has just learned that Panamanian dictator General Manuel Noriega has been found. Just a few minutes ago, we received reports that Noriega, who'd been on the run since the U.S. invaded late Wednesday night, has turned himself in to the papal nuncio in Panama. That is the equivalent of the Vatican Embassy, Noriega, apparently asking for political asylum there. Here is General Maxwell Thurmond, head of the U.S. Southern Command. Uh, a few minutes ago, we received a report that Mr. Noriega had presented himself at the papal nunciariat and turned himself in for political asylum. Now you know all I know. Do you believe this report? I have the report, and uh, I'm acting on the basis that it is true. General Thurman. That's all I'm going to say is what I said. Yes. General Thurman, can you t could you tell me what what is the papal nuncio? The papal nuncio is, of course. Pope John Paul II's representative in Panama, the nunciariat, uh, the equivalent of an embassy from the Vatican to the government of Panama. NBC News will keep you posted on this very important development. One of the, the top uh, strategies and goals of the U.S. invasion in Panama, as soon as more information comes in. I'm Mary Alice Williams. This has been an NBC News special report. We now rejoin the program already in progress. And while you are away, the Denver Broncos have just taken the lead from 12 yards out. A little shuttle pass to this man, Bobby Humphrey. We'll show that to you right after the uh, extra point attempt by David Treadwell. And it is good. And Denver goes up by a score of 7-3. to three. Quick little shuttle pass right here. Underhanded flick right there to Humphrey, who has no trouble getting in. But the most interesting part of this play, which we'll show you in a few moments, was Elway's confrontation with our referee. We'll come back after this commercial, and we'll give you a look at that. If you don't want to slow down on your way to the top, Because you know to make a beer as refreshing as a mountain stream, you've got to start with a mountain stream. It's the right beer now. When a night on the town might last all night, call for the taste preferred at better night spots. The silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. You want a deal? Well, here. Now get low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just another deal. 
It's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers on all other models. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. This is the deal of a new generation. Oldsmobile. I've made up my mind. I'm going to do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. 72 yards on the scoring drive in eight plays, and it took only 223 for Denver to take the lead, 7-3. to three. Now with 5.56, time remaining in the first half, and David Treadwell will be kicking off. Jamie Holland and Anthony Miller are the two return men, and we look for number 83, Anthony Miller, to be the return man. We mentioned earlier he needs two returns to qualify for the leadership and kickoff returns in the league. He needs to average around 25 yards of return. He got 24 the first time out. And when uh, head coach Dan Henning told us about this yesterday, we said any chance that Jamie Holland will return. He said, not the first two. You can count on that. You better believe it. Anthony will get this one on the dead. No, Holland. Holly, yes, he will. Holland hands it off to him. But he wishes he hadn't given him that one. That's going to be a very short return. Let's go back, Charlie, to that last play. You're going to see Leslie O'Neill, 91, come in and knock Elway right on his back. Now watch the play, turn it loose, and watch O'Neal coming in from the right-hand side of your screen. The ball is gone. One, two, clearly a late hit. Now watch Elway. He's going to jump up. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Watch Elway. Jumps up, and he's right in the face of Tom White. He continued that confrontation on for quite a while toward the sideline, furious with the new referee for not calling roughness on that play. And Charlie, he's right. He is right. The return, by the way, for Anthony Miller was 15 yards. And Tolliver comes out throwing, and it's intercepted. Randy Robbins. Billy Joe Tolliver had five touchdowns and only four interceptions coming into the day. That's his third interception of this afternoon. One more, he'll have equaled his four from the four games in which he has started. This is just a bad pass and a good jump by Randy Robbins. And I'm sure, Charlie, the rookie is looking at his receiver all the way, which is deadly when you play against a good defensive backfield. And Gary Kubiak is now the quarterback for Denver. So as soon as Elway took the Broncos on that touchdown drive, Reeves made the change. He said he wanted Kubiak to get some more quality time when the game was still on the line and Bratton is the ball carrier and Mel goes to about the 38 yard line let's go back to that John Elway play and I want to say a, I want a word or two as the counsel for the defense of the referee the end of the play is what we're concerned about 91 Leslie O'Neill you see O'Neill one one and a half, two, Charlie. Oh, that's Watch right. Elway now. Elway up. Absolutely furious. Oh, he's right. With Tom White. Oh, he's right. He's absolutely right. And Who it should have been defend, called. Charlie? Who do you know? I have a word for the defense. <laughs> not, a, not a big word. It's a little word. Mel Bratton, close to the first down. And while they check that out, you have a referee who is a headlinesman. And as a headlinesman has specific responsibilities looking at specific areas. He is not used to, first time he's ever been a referee, he's not used to looking for that. Now he will be aware of it. He wasn't aware of it. Now he will be aware of it. That's, that's fair. He was Charlie. wrong. That's fair, Charlie. You know, but in his defense. Very fair. Thank but you. he'll remember it. <laughs> yes, but, but my client still, still loses, right? <laughs> much like the learning that young quarterbacks do, much like the learning that Billy Joe Tolliver is doing today. It's painful. Yes. Third down and one. And Denver has the first down. And at this point, we, we feel that we're going to see, that was Bobby Humphrey carrying, we'll start seeing a mix of running backs. We, we expect to see Sammy Winder. We expect to see Jeff Alexander working in and out of there all the time. Plummer and Phillips making the last tackle. And it's a first down at the 34-yard line. 
two yards. Broncos first down at the Chargers 34. to lose a couple. Bert Grossman and Leslie O'Neill were waiting for them. Check out all the scores in case you joined us late. Here is another reminder. In the playoffs, in the AFC, Buffalo, Cleveland, and Denver. Houston is in as a wild card. They will play either Pittsburgh or Cincinnati, depending on the outcome of the game tomorrow night, Cincinnati at Minnesota. In the NFC, the Giants are in San Francisco, also in. Rams at Philadelphia in the wild card. And the other division champion will be either Minnesota or Green Bay depending upon the outcome of that game tomorrow night. Monty Smith in for Jim Juriga. Left guard, Charlie. Kubiak to throw. Second down. Rolls. Throws. The receiver, Michael Young, had to come back and is not going to have the first down. He had it at about the 24-yard line, but came back to help out the quarterback and is going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Gilbert had the coverage. One of the blocks that Dan Reeves has used to help rebuild this offense, and Michael Young, a plan B acquisition from the Rams, has been much more effective as a Bronco than he ever was as a Ram. He's caught 21 passes, but a lot of those have been very big plays. He seems to have increased his speed here. And he loves catching the ball from Elway. Of course, he's catching it from Kubiak. He likes that, too, Charlie. Third down and one at the 25. And the defense was waiting for Mel Bratton. And as Gary Plummer, the leading tackler for San Diego, along with pro bowler Leslie O'Neill. Charlie, we showed that car up on blocks earlier, that car that belonged to Lester yes. Lyles. It was Gary Plummer. Lyles had hidden Plummer's car early in the year. So Plummer got even. He got, he got Lyles' keys. They took his car out by the practice field. They took the wheels off, put it up on blocks. They said they were going to put the four wheels back where the car was originally. That was too mean. But uh, football players are a little bit cruel. That was Gary Plummer's way of getting even with Lester Lyles. And we'll take the countdown to the two-minute warning. The score is Denver 7 and San Diego 3. We'll be back in a moment. I got a phone call this morning from one of our oldest customers. He fired us. After 20 years, he fired us. Said he didn't know us anymore. I think I know why. We used to do business with a handshake, face to face. Now it's a phone call and a fax. I'll get back to you later with another fax, probably. Well, folks, something's got to change. That's why we're going to set out for a little face-to-face -face chat with every customer we have. But Ben, that's got to be over 200 cities. I don't care. Thanks. If you're the kind of business that still believes personal service deserves no, a lot more than lip service, Watts. welcome to United. Larry. Lewis. That's the way we've been doing business for over 60 years. Ben, where are you going? To visit that old friend who fired us this morning. United. Come fly the friendly skies. Once, there were a few proud men. Men of adventure. Men of courage. Men who knew the meaning of honor. There still are the Marines. We're looking for a few good men. Well, for all of those on Christmas Eve that face the same problem that I always face, uh, we didn't get our cards out in time. Merle and I were going to send one to each of you, but we figured we'd save a little money and we have our Christmas card here. A very lovely Christmas card, and not only does it look pretty. <laughs> Christmas greetings, everyone. Forty three yard field goal attempt by David Treadwell. And it is no good. It is off to the side. 
So the score remains Denver 7. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. There's a flag. I thought we were going away. And it's against San Diego. It will give Denver a first down. They'll have the opportunity to continue this drive. Personal foul. And Dan Henning can't believe it. Gunter Cunningham, his defensive line coach, in front of him there. Are they saying it was on Leslie O'Neill? Well, we know Leslie O'Neill is not happy. He's not happy. We know that. And we will receive the official word. Personal foul on the play. Personal foul, defense, hands to the head, after the kick, post possession, half the distance to the goal line, first down, San Diego. It is a post possession foul that means after the kick, so possession had already changed. And San Diego had possession. And so San Diego's offense will come out on the field. No, no, Charlie. No? They're giving it back. Well, yes, they are. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Denver's offense was still out on the field. Yeah, well, we had. It would appear that it might be Grossman, number 92, working inside on Monty Smith, number 65. But that may be unfair to Grossman. Since the referee didn't call it, maybe we better not do that. But you're right, Charlie. If it's post possession, the ball has been given up. And they've got to uh, let San Diego have the ball. The officials meeting on the sideline to make sure that they are all in sync on that decision. We have a personal foul, post possession by the receivers. They were entitled to the ball at the 26. Half the distance puts it on the thir <coughs> 13. First down. The reason, of, the, of course, you know, as, as you follow pro football, is that they had given up the ball on the field goal attempt. Once you kick it. Once you kick it. And so after that, it's called post possession, so that our possession had changed. But it was interesting because at one time we had both offenses out on the field, <laughs> both ready to snap now, the ball. Now, that would have been an interesting matchup, yeah. Charlie. Dan Reeves is discussing this, and meanwhile, we'll take a timeout. 156 left to go, first half. Denver leads it 7 to 3. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll love your new Oldsmobile. We'll let you return it within 30 days or 1,500 miles if you don't. Who else does that? Unlike some warranties, Oldsmobile's covers just one part. This is the part. Oldsmobile now offers roadside assistance around the clock, even in places where there aren't any clocks. The Oldsmobile Edge, there's nothing else like it. The network. It's the most powerful tool in business today. At GTE, we can put that power in your hands. The power of a personalized communications network designed for the success of your business alone. The growth of your business, the prosperity of your business. We've done it for others, we'll do it for you. Because at GTE, the power is on. This December, things are really heating up. Heating up at every GM division. Each dealer is out to make December hotter than ever before. Deals like 4.8% APR GMAC financing for 48 months or cash back up to $750 on the roomy new sedan and sport coupe, the Chevrolet Lumina. Yes, this December is incredibly hot at every GM division. It's GM's hot December. Come feel the heat. Come home to the best in college football as Auburn battles Ohio State in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Then number five Florida State takes on sixth ranked Nebraska at the Fiesta Bowl. And a game that will determine the national championship as number one Colorado battles fourth ranked Notre Dame at the Orange Bowl. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC. San Diego's ball first down at their own 13 yard line. 156 time remaining in the first half. And this is Darren Nelson coming to the outside. Tolliver to throw. He goes deep to Miller. It is incomplete. Kip Corrington broke it up. We've been told that it was not Burt Grossman on that penalty, but Joe Phillips instead. And here's Phillips, number 75, 
Let's watch him on that attempted field goal. He drives into his man, number 65, Monty Coleman, and drives. That's Whitell, I think, 67. And he's got the hands right in the face. You see him with the hands to the face. They're saying that that was after the ball was kicked. So Phillips, who's about 300 pounds, driving on the rookie and just put the hands up to the face of Doug Whitell. Tolliver, incomplete. Tolliver now in the first half, 7 of 23, 113 yards and three interceptions and seven overthrows and about four <laughs> drops and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. Charlie, I don't, I don't think it's the first half that he's going to mark down as his favorite time and there's somebody who will help him to remember some of the rough spots because Dan Henning wanting very much to see this young rookie with all of his strength his leadership capabilities reminds a lot of people of Sonny Jurgensen yeah. the young Sonny Jurgensen but uh, Sonny threw the ball a little better than Billy's thrown it today third down has the first down Anthony Miller pulls it in Carrington with the tackle 14 yards first down they'll come out quickly and they'll go right back to the line no huddle Two minute offense, 127 and counting. Denver leads it 7 3. Tolliver goes deep, far side, and he overthrows. Eighth overthrow. Anthony Miller, the intended receiver. Your Pro Bowl receiver, and you feature him as much as you can. And Dan Henning, I'm sure, eager to see his finish, uh, season finished properly. They played a very fine game last week against Kansas City. Many felt, and I think we were certainly among that group, that Kansas City playing some of the best football in the league in the last part of the season. I thought they were headed for the playoffs. They certainly looked to be that way, but they went back last week, and Henning's Chargers just really carved them up. Really carved them up, offensively even, and defensively. Even more impressive, San Diego, warm weather team against Kansas City, a cold weather team, and it was a cold day. Reverse. Miller. That's Looks for a block. The same play that they came close to scoring on, and Anthony Miller showing some excellent running ability. The play designed to go left. There were just too many defensive bodies there, and Anthony Miller will bring it all the way back across the field. Watch this. Number 83 right there. No room outside. He goes back against the grain, and Tolliver gets a good block on the far side. Ooh, bang. That right was Nelson there. that picked Nelson. one up, too. All right. Yes. Tolliver got a block himself. Yep. So the rookie quarterback getting his licks in on the day. For the Chargers, 12 games have been decided by seven points or less, and they won only three of those 12. Well, they have had an extremely disappointing season. I'll tell you, Charlie, they're much better than the, t the five and ten record that they sport right now. 25 yards in the last play to the Denver 45. And this pass is complete to McEwen. And Randy Robbins makes the tackle. 38. We've got a timeout. We have exactly one minute left to go in the first half. Denver 7, San Diego 3. The Chargers on the move. And let's check in and see what's going to happen at halftime. Well, of course, it'll be NFL Live. O.J. and Bob Costas. And the headlines of NFL Live, Al Davis, his Raiders need an intimate stadium as a home for the 90s. 90,000 is a nice intimate number. No, I'm just made that up. Sam White, his team's 61-7 win over Houston Oilers last week, affected the Oilers last night. Bobby Beathard, Cowboys will dismantle scouting system. Jimmy Johnson, responsible. And there they are. O.J., Bob, the fearsome force the insiders. And Bob and O.J. scores and highlights. Tom Brokaw with the latest update on what is going on worldwide. A dramatic times for us, Charlie. Yes. They point to the insignificance of our trivial battles on this green carpet in front of us, don't they? They really do. You're, you're absolutely right. Second down and three at the 38. Tolliver, now he's on target. Anthony Miller. Hurry up offense again. First down, 15 more yards. 
Again, a power pass. You could almost visualize Elway locking on the receiver and rifling that ball. Conover looks, pumps, has it in all alone, overthrows him. Experience. Billy Joe, you need to temper it down and just lopped it over the top. Good fake here. Watch the long arm fake. That's what sets up the play. The second move breaks the receiver open. The defender clearly beaten, but you just got to drop that ball in there. Billy Joe will watch that one many times, and he'll say, come on now, come on now. Got to make that play. Nelson was wide open, his ninth overthrow in the first half. 35 seconds left to go in the first half. Denver 7, San Diego 3. Tippo picking up a little bit after a very sluggish first quarter. Tolliver getting into a better rhythm in that particular drive, too. Needs That's to finish it up. And too much time? No. He just stops the clock. He didn't like what he saw. Or was it too much time? The reset on the clock, Charlie, down below. And Tolliver just stepped away. He just put the ball in the ground. He was out of time and decided that's the best thing to do. And then a quick regroup. He's only got 35 seconds left. That's the 30 second clock that you're looking at there. The game clock is 35 seconds. 35 seconds. seconds. Uh -huh. So we've got enough time for a couple of plays. Has pressure. Incomplete. Carl Mecklenburg, big number 77, right on Tolliver's heels. Mecklenburg going back to the Pro Bowl again. 77. Boy, I tell you, those sevens have been lucky for Denver. There are two of them on Carl Mecklenburg's back, and Elway, where's the other one? Mecklenburg and Elway playing in their 100th games today for these Broncos. He's been running a bit. This heat, I'll tell you, the heat hurts a team that practices in the cold. Even though they've been working inside in their dome, it's cold there, and your conditioning tends to fail you a little bit late in the year. Chris Barr, 42-yard field goal attempt. And he has it. So he has hit from 22 and 42 and missed from 52. And San Diego has pulled within one with 25 seconds left to go in the first half. And on Saturday, January the 13th, Sports World takes you to beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. You and I are going to be there. Looking That's fun. Tell to me that. about you. We're, we'll be doing the telecast, but you played in the Hula Bowl. Tell me how that game is. Charlie, I played in the Hula Bowl back in 1962 and a chance to play in the old stadium there. Not as nice as the new one. And they had a, a storm that night. It got so, or that afternoon, it got so wet that we were all covered with this thick, gooey mud. You couldn't recognize the guys on your own team. I knocked down one of my own teammates on an interception. I, I thought he was coming, and I was going to block him. He said, hey, I'm on your side. But I'm looking forward to going back. If I go loved playing in that game. If it's going to be that way, I don't want to go with you. <laughs> no, it's, I won't knock my teammates down. I promise, Charlie. <laughs> An exciting time for these college seniors getting a chance to play against the best. Ken Bell from the one to the 20. Has a nice return out across the 30 yard line. And be sure to be with us on championship money. We'll start off with the Hall of Fame Bowl. Auburn, Ohio State. Merle and I will be at the Fiesta Bowl along with Jimmy Cephalo, Nebraska, Florida State. The Orange Bowl, Colorado, and Notre Dame. Oh, those are three great ball games. All starts January 1st. Coverage beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And Bob and O.J. and the insiders will all be hosting it from the side of the Orange Bowl. Now, I know that a lot of people listening us to us today, uh, Buffs fans. Oh, oh rooting yeah. For those. The whole state of Colorado oh, is yeah. ready to go. Got to believe that they are excited. Their team already in Miami to try and practice in some of that warm weather. And I'm excited for them. I think it's a great. I think it's just great for the for the school and the state. Just a final ad. It's cold in Miami right now. <laughs> get it. They're having a cold wave down there. <laughs> Snowed in Tallahassee. I wonder. Florida State is down there probably saying, "What in the world is going down?" Colorado's bringing their own weather with them. Brought it with them. And there is the official countdown. It is halftime. 
Sluggish first quarter. Some action in the second period. The Denver Broncos 7 and Elway to Humphrey 12 yard pass and a pair of field goals for San Diego. Denver 7, San Diego 6. It is halftime on Christmas Eve. Hi, I'm Joe Morris. You know, one of the most exciting things to see is young athletes with real talent. How do you tell a kid that he's going blind? Hunting. How do you tell a kid that he's got to trade in his football and his playbook for Braille lessons and a cane? How do you tell a kid that he's inherited RP and there's no cure yet? What do you tell him? That people he doesn't even know are helping. People like you. Stay! Stand! Hunt! <laughs> Support the RP Foundation. Support it as if your eyesight depended on it. Yeah! Call the RP Foundation Fighting Blindness at 800-638-2300. The preceding message furnished by the National Football League. Stay tuned for NFL Live after these messages from your local station. Tuesday, is it magic or is it murder? Nothing is as it seems. Only Matlock the Great can find the key to a shocking mystery. That's some trick. A magical Matlock. Then, a sex scandal. Well, well, well. And a deadly intruder put Tibbs on trial. You have nothing concrete. In the heat of the night, followed by Midnight Caller Tuesday. We got the Toyota Camry because we both need a car with a lot of room. Mrs. Martino has like about 10,000 suitcases are full of junk she packs in their comfort trips. When we travel, Pat and I both have a lot of stuff. But it's never a problem loading the Camry. Mr. Martino has like about one suitcase this big, but he gets to drive. <laughs> I love what you do for me, Toyota. When the CU Buffaloes bring home the Orange Bowl, be there with your Buffalo station since 1984. News 4's Ron Zapolo, Bob Palmer, Bill Stewart, Peter Rogott, and Mark McIntosh bring you daily live coverage direct from team headquarters in Miami. From the practice field to the parade to the 1989 Orange Bowl, only one station has it all. News 4, your official Orange Bowl station. Season greetings from the Denver Broncos and Channel 4. Welcome back to our NFL Live studios in New York. Bob Costas along with O.J. Simpson. Merry Christmas once again, everybody. Denver leading San Diego in the game you're watching 7-6 at halftime. The Broncos trying to finish at 12-4, which would be three more victories than anybody else in the conference. Yeah, well, the interesting thing about uh, Denver is that by winning and having the best record, they may get the toughest game, the, uh, their first game in the playoffs. They could very well end up playing Houston, a team that Bobby Beathard thinks can beat them, or Cincinnati, a team that we know has the talent to beat anybody. All right, quickly through all the scores here, beginning with that Denver score of 7-6 to six over San Diego. Chicago is playing at San Francisco. 49ers will have the best record in all of football. They're trying to finish up at 14-2. and two. Joe Montana throws a 29-yard touchdown pass to Jerry Rice. For Rice, his 17th TD of the year, Dalton Hilliard leads the NFL. He has 18 for New Orleans, 16-0 San Francisco at halftime. The Bears in jeopardy of closing the year with six consecutive defeats. Now, these are all finals from earlier today. The Giants clinch the NFC East and eliminate the Raiders from wildcard consideration. 34-17 at the Meadowlands. This was a big play. The rookie kick returner, Dave Meggett, who is going to the Pro Bowl, takes the Raiders' first punt of the game early in the first quarter, breaks tackles, slips tackles, and there he goes. 76 yards for the TD. The Raiders fought back, tied it at 17 at halftime, but the Giants dominated in the second half and won it, and with it, they took the title in the NFC East, leaving Philadelphia to settle for a wild card, which they claim by beating Phoenix 31-14 to in Philadelphia. The Eagles go 11-5. Phoenix 5 and 11 lost their last six straight, including the last five after they fired Gene Stallings. Kansas City beat Miami twice this year head to head. Neither team going to the playoffs. 
27 to 24 is the final there. 98 yards on the ground for Christian Okoye, who finishes with 1,480, and that leads the National Football League 10 yards better than Barry Sanders, the great rookie for the Detroit Lions. We'll tell you about Sanders in just a minute. Indianapolis could have been a wild card. They didn't need any help. All they had to do was win at New Orleans today. It didn't happen, not by a long shot. It was close at the half, 10 to 6, but the Saints romp in the second half, 41 to 6. Neither team going to the playoffs. Pittsburgh with a shot at making it to the playoffs. After that disastrous start when they were outscored 92 to 10 in their first two defeats, they finished the year at 9 and 7. They win today at Tampa Bay, 31 to 22. Green Bay is 10 and 6. Dallas 1 and 15 for the year. 20 to 10, the final score today in Dallas. The lone victory for Jimmy Johnson's team this year deprives the Washington Redskins of a trip to the playoffs. The L.A. Rams clinch a wild card. They go 11 and 5. They had to sweat at New England. Greg Bell rushed for over 200 yards, including a three-yard run in the waning seconds to give them the lead at 24 to 20. But Steve Grogan brought the Patriots down the field, got them first and goal at the five with nine seconds to go. The first two passes fell incomplete. Now this one, as time expires, back of the end zone, no good. Double zeros on the clock. This is the Packer locker room in Dallas. They were hoping for a Ram loss, which would have given them another avenue to the playoffs. As it is now, they can't be a wild card. Their only chance is to be the champions of the NFC Central if the Vikings lose tomorrow night at home against the Bengals. Detroit and Atlanta. Detroit wins this one 31-24 before a crowd of 7,792, smallest in Falcon history. Atlanta finishes 3-13. They will get the first pick upcoming in the uh, college draft. Barry Sanders had 158 yards on the ground today and three touchdowns. The Heisman Trophy winner in his rookie season rushes for 1,470 yards, just 10 back of Christian Okoye for the league rushing title. Now to the playoff picture. We start with the AFC. These teams have clinched. The Broncos, the Bills, and the Browns as division champions. The Oilers, though they lost their last two, get a wild card at 9-7. and seven. They clinched it when the Colts lost at New Orleans today. Who will the other wild card team be? It'll be the Bengals if they beat the Vikings tomorrow night at the Metrodome. If the Bengals lose, then the Steelers are the wild card. If the Steelers get in, they play at Houston in the wild card game. If the Bengals get in, what a matchup to savor. Glanville and Weish renewing acquaintances just two weeks after the 61-7 demolition at Riverfront. The Oilers would come back to Cincinnati. Now to the NFC we go. These teams have clinched. The 49ers and the Giants as champions of the West and the East, respectively. The Eagles and the Rams are the wildcard teams. The only thing left to decide is the champion of the NFC Central. The team that finishes second here cannot be a wild card. The second place finisher will be eliminated. The Vikings get the title if they beat Cincinnati tomorrow night. If, however, they stumble, then the Packers move into the playoffs as champions of the NFC Central. We will see you next Sunday. We don't know the starting time yet for the AFC wild card game. OJ will join me along with the insiders, Bobby Bethard and Ralph Wiley. It's either Pittsburgh at Houston or Houston at Cincinnati. We're going to take a station break here. When we come back, we'll turn it over to Tom Brokaw of NBC News. There are new developments in the situation in Panama, and we'll get to that following these messages from your local stations. <laughs>